So welcome everybody. I, I, I'm pleased to have my good friend here, Ann Ryan from Ireland, uh, an eft -er that has been around a long time, unseen therapist, advanced student, and so on and so forth. Say hello, Ann. Hi, Gary. Hi, everybody. Hi. So our topic today has to do with some blocks to success with our process with the unseen therapist and so on. And um, there are many, you know, blocks that happen that we have to be used to and, 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 and develop and all of that's, you know, involved in our course. But Anne, why don't you start off with uh, one of the examples that you're, you're familiar with, and then we'll just go from there and, and flesh mm -hmm. this out. Lovely. Um, I think one of the big blocks to to our success and our success is that we kind of move on from the issues that are bothering us. You know, we, we clear the anxiety. We bring more peace into our system. We don't have the knee pain, whatever it might be that we're aiming towards with with all of this work. Um, and I think fear is one of the biggest things that that holds us back just as human beings. Um, mm -hmm. And I think often the fear can be very old. It can come from a place of something that happened when we were five or six or three or 10. And, and, and there can still be that six-year-old that we carry within us. I mean, not at a conscious level always, um, that is kind of pulling the reins like, oh, oh, you know, don't just in case, because that didn't work out so well last time. And even though we're now decades on from being six, the six-year-old is, is still very much kind of holding the reins and, and, and pulling them back to kind of slow things down. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking uh, as an example of that, if the, the six-year-old who has been, let's say, at the, um, uh, has been subject to ongoing criticisms and abuse from their family, parents, perhaps, or father, mother, this kind mm -hmm. of thing, and they're mm -hmm. so used to that, and, and even at these early ages, they are used to protecting themselves however they do that. Mm. Okay. Dissociating sometimes, uh, you know, uh, you know, other ways of doing it. And so when we come along with the unseen therapist and we completely revise that, we resolve the whole thing. So if all that previous protective device doesn't even need to be there, mm. Now they're going into the unknown. They're not, they're, that's not known to them anymore. It's an unknown. Is that your experience? Yes. I, th I think that's a really good way of putting it. And, and the unknown can be scary. I mean, even though we, we want it, we want to move forward in our lives. We want, you know, to feel better physically, emotionally. But the, the unknown can be scary. So, so that in itself, and, and I, I think whether it's, the six-year-old or whether it's the, the the new territory, the unknown part, whatever it is, I think like inviting in compassion for ourselves in it, because it's so easy to go, oh, come on, you six-year-old, you know, we're not six anymore or whatever. And like, it's really, really important that we, I, I believe that we like honor and feel compassionate towards those parts that are doing their best, but haven't caught up with today when that's no longer relevant. Yeah, I, I'm trying to imagine somebody in early years that had been criticized or abused in some fashion, mm. and now all the angers and griefs and guilts attached to that and their protective devices mm. are somehow gone, mm. and they are replaced by peace, mm. or at least they're, we're moving towards peace, mm. either mm. replaced by or moving that direction. That's unknown. They don't know what peace is. No. They, they have an emotional response in current time to think people say things and do things. And we replay this other unresolved stuff and we shy back or don't, you know, mm. the way we respond limits us in many ways. Mm. Mm. Um, but, but, you know, if, if, if they, if it isn't resolved and they have this, this, unknown thing they actually get afraid of that in a sense yeah They're afraid of that don't want to go there oh yeah. no nah, nah. let me hold on to what was you know so mm. that does work itself out by the way mm. with time with time mm. anyway go ahead expand on your example if 
If yeah, you know. I, I mean, I, I know another example that, that comes to mind, and, and, and I seem to have heard this a reasonable amount recently, is um, that sometimes there are, there are lots of people out there in the world who have done a lot of work over many, many years, you know, on, on, on themselves and on their issues and whatever. Um, maybe people who are studying, you know, your Optimal EFT, the, the Unseen Therapist book or the course, you know, or maybe people who've been involved in other modalities. And what I hear with some frequency is like, I should be able to do this on my own. Like I shouldn't need, you know, to go to somebody or to work with somebody. I should be able to do this on my own. Now, for me, when I hear should, there's a little, you know, antenna that kind of goes up because when there's a should in there, there's, you know, underlying beliefs and there's, you know, lots of interesting things to explore. Yeah, sure. And, um, you know, but as well as that, I mean, sometimes when we're so caught up in something ourselves, you know, when we're really not at peace, it can be more of a challenge to connect to the unseen therapist. So whether it's finding somebody that's happy to practice along with us or whatever it might be, I think just having another person um, and that person is more objective because it's not their stuff, no matter, you know, how much they're there to help us. Have, going to somebody else sometimes can make a really big difference. But on the other hand, you're, you're right. Some people say, well, and this is one of our blocks to success. You know, I should be able to do this on my own. But, and, and a parallel uh, to that is, well, I should be able to do this on my own. Why should I rely on something as out there in woo woo as the unseen therapist, a power that is really within, not aware of, and so on. Ooh, maybe my ego should take charge. <laughs> Here comes our ego. Yes, our ego always has all the answers. All right. Maybe my ego should take charge here and it should solve the problem rather than relying on this ultimate power within that's another unknown to them in a way you know mm -hmm. most of us realize we've got this ultimate power we just don't know what to do with it you know mm -hmm. our course and in, in this examples we're giving right here and so on is helping people get in touch with mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. power but that's you know the the should i call it i i, I will call it lack of trust in that okay. power lack of trust in the unseen therapist yeah uh, you've seen this yourself. You've experienced it yourself. Yes, and and maybe lack of trust in our own ability to communicate. Like it can work for other people, but you know, lack lack of trust of our our own ability to do it. And then, of course, second guessing. You know, was that my head or was that the unseen therapist? Or you know, how do I know the difference? So this is complex, isn't it? You know, because yeah. we're humans and we're complex. The the interesting thing about it, this way my advanced course is designed the way it is. Uh, it takes, it takes experience uh, to start gaining this trust. We start working on a specific event. Uh, you know, my father did so-and-so to me when I was six years old and said whatever it was, and I'm still feeling angry about it or guilty about it or whatever. I'm at a nine or I'm at a 10. I I'm just thinking about it. We'll then go through this personal peace procedure with the unseen therapist. And more often than not, if we've designed and located our specific event well, and of course teaches you how to do that, this nine or 10 or whatever it is, it's going to go to, to a zero or a one or a two or something really quite small. Hmm. And um, it's easy hmm. for the client to somehow say, well, that was a coincidence <laughs> or something like that. But after you do that, once, twice, three, five, eight, ten times. After a while, you begin to trust that this yeah. ultimate yeah. healing power is really there. Now, you may need to refine your process. You may need to learn more about it to get deeper and so on. But it's really there. It's yeah. the ultimate power. Yeah. But it takes trust. And that's one of the blocks to success is people sometimes will quit or stop or delay or whatever before they develop heavy trust. Now, 
Hmm. I'm going to guess, and because I don't think I talked to you about this, but but you're have you're on that same path of I didn't trust much at all, and now I'm trusting a lot more. Do I have that right? What's your personal experience? Yeah, um, what's my personal experience? Um, my my ability to communicate is probably the. I I think the trust was there because that something kind of spiritual and deep was there within me. You presented this to the world, and I was like, oh my goodness. This is what I've been waiting for. Okay, so for me, that part was easy. Um, but the communicating with the unseen therapist, like, yeah, just being open to that. I mean, there's a huge surrender happens in communicating with her, you know, and, and as somebody who's quite organized and structured, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, which I am, like there's there there really is a sort of a, a kind of letting go and handing over that that I think maybe for some people, but happened for me bit by bit by bit. And then you, as you say, the trust builds as you see, oh, okay, well, that was, that that guidance really worked out or that thing I heard or I saw, you know, led me in the, down the right path. Um, and I'm guessing it's different for everybody. So the trust in the unseen therapist being there for me wasn't an issue at the beginning. Um, but the communication with her, I mean, for a long time, I needed to do it with somebody else and then eventually can do it myself now. That still qualifies to me as a block, maybe you want to call it a semi-block, the mm. communication bit mm. uh, for you, maybe not for others, but at least for you. Ah, OK, I'm already in touch. I'm a believer, this kind of thing in this extra spiritual power that's within. I just don't know how to access it well. And yeah. now accessing it well means communicating well. Listening is a better way to say it. Mm. Unseen mm. therapist is always communicating with wisdom far beyond wisdom that that we think we have. Our egos mm. <laughs> think we have all the answers. But no, this other wisdom is there. And you've got to learn to listen. You mm. know, and, and the more experience you have with our advanced course, and so, which is designed to help you listen, mm. the more you're able to distinguish between true guidance mm. Mm. true aims toward peace mm. and the chatter that goes on all the time anyway mm. <laughs> okay. it yeah. just takes a while to do and yes and i've been at it for some time and i'm getting better better and better at it but i'm not perfect at it i'm still learning to listen myself and i assume you are too Ab absolutely oh God. i mean it's a work in progress and i think it will be all my life all our lives you know um yeah yeah, absolutely. So what that does, properly seen, is it this communication that we're talking about being a block to success hmm. is actually an opportunity. It's an exciting opportunity because as you begin to climb our server to miracles in this direction, hmm. ah, you're starting to get some stuff that is not just about your headache or your ailment or whatever. Hmm. You know, it's about other things in your life. It's about decisions you need to make. What about mm -hmm. doing this with your children or doing that and so on? And um, you know, there's everyday decisions that don't have to do with our specific ailments. Okay. Yeah. And you walk through this life lighter. Yes. Lighter. Yeah. Lighter. But in the meantime, the block, the block becomes an opportunity, an exciting opportunity and I'd, mm. i'm inviting everybody listening in to shift that perception to from i don't know if i can really get into this unseen therapist thing to mm. what an opportunity if i could mm. and believe me believe me you can <laughs> okay. it yeah. will take experience it will take yeah. experience yes but you can mm. Anything else? Go ahead. Go ahead. I, ju I just want to say, I, I think that is a lovely way of, of kind of shifting around how, how we can look at these things. And I think the other thing I would say is to bring fun into it. It's like there can be lightness. There can be, oh, I wonder what you might have to say today. You know, I mean, I tend to look up when I talk to the unseen therapist, but like, like we can just play with it. And it's like, so what if nothing happens or seems to happen or we don't seem to hear anything? It's like, Take the seriousness out of it, you know, the kind of, oh, gosh, I've got to sit and I've got to be, you know, fist clenched and really intense and tuned in and whatever. I think I think that lightness and like you say, the opportunity, it, it takes the weight, the pressure off it. 
unseen therapist, for those listening in, some might think she's all very serious. You have all these very serious things. You have grief and you have angers and you know, we got to do. She's got this great sense of humor. Hmm. I remember one of our mutual friends, Marion, was telling this, this story. She was asking unseen therapists, and she's very good at this. She's been at it some time, for an answer to some some issue going on. She was asking unseen therapists and was getting nothing. <laughs> and she says, how come you're not getting, how come I'm not getting anything? How come you're not answering me? <laughs> unseen therapist answers, well, because you're not listening. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, which is just that's just that's just she's saying it like it is but it is in this humorous way it's not yeah. it's not shame on you straighten mm -hmm. up yeah it's always very light yeah it's very light you're talking to the ultimate truth which doesn't need to defend itself yeah you know so it just comes from this very light place and if you're not getting it right that's okay we'll wait yeah, patience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's all an illusion anyway. So, you know, <laughs> lighten up <laughs> kind of thing, you know. In the meantime, you might want to look here, look there, look someplace else, you know. So uh, as, as these pointers come up. So Anyway, blocks to success. Anything more you want to talk about on all no, that? No, I, I, that's, that's lovely. Thanks, Gary. All right. Okay. Well, all right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll, uh, we'll see you next time.